Hello guys, this is the Epiphany. Today's video is going to be a tutorial for the Hopper Mage class. I'm going to be explaining how the agility spells work only because the agility is the most common element in Dofu's PvP and you know it's 3v3 and 5v5 PvP. Uh, agility Hopper Mage is very useful and I agree with that because they have a lot of mobility, they have a lot of uh, usefulness when it comes to unbewitching, erosion, uh, teleporting and also moving enemies around and such. Uh, I'm also going to be explaining to you all of these yellow spells and what they do, uh, what situation to use them in, um, as well as elemental combinations, activation of runes, uh, how runes work, what runes are, uh, after I do all of these things, the other elemental spells, uh, intelligence, strength, and chance will be pretty self-explanatory. So, yeah. Uh, before I continue the video, I want to mention that I did finish the 6 out of 6 achievement, as you can see from my ornament. Uh, that means I can craft legendary equipment now, and uh, that's just a heads up in case anyone wants me to craft something for them. I also want to mention to my previous video, the Osamodas uh, tutorial 2.54. This video is actually a little bit outdated now because the Oza class had been nerfed since I made this video. Uh, the only differences include the Spiritual Leash uh, and the resummoning of summons across the map. They're going to have minus 100 MP. But other than that, this video is still 90% accurate. Uh, just a warning to you guys, uh, this class is not an easy class to play. It's quite difficult, in my opinion, um, it's probably a bit more difficult than Eliotrope because there's so many things you have to remember. And, you know, I really hope that uh, my explaining will help you understand some things here. Uh, there are many things you have to remember and sometimes you have to make many moves in the fight and you have barely any time to do that, which I find to be most uh, of the time. You know, you have barely any time to use your action points, uh, your AP and you usually find yourself running out of time because you need to think of the best possible thing to to do in the fight that will make the biggest difference in the fight uh, that's all you know to do with a uh, an effective player when it comes to pvp uh yeah so i'll show you uh some some of the um uh, i'll show you the spells uh i'm also going to be doing some pvm fights uh to demonstrate some of the other spells uh, as to why they're useful depending on uh, what situation. Uh, in a nutshell, some of these spells are better used on uh, situations where there are a lot of enemies grouping, such as PVM, and some of these spells are better for 3v3 Colosseum, where you only need to focus on one target. Okay, so let's get into the video. Alright, I'm going to start off by showing you the agility spells. Uh, we have the Aether spell. We have the Hurricane spell, we have the Comet spell, and we have the Astral Blade somewhere uh, on the left here. Okay, so let's uh, get into the fight and I'll show you. Um... Okay, so we have a spell called Ether, which is 3 AP cost, 1 to 4 range, and doesn't require line of sight, so you can use it through an obstacle and so on. And it does air damage, you can use twice per target per turn. And it places an air rune at the bottom of the target, as well as putting them in the air state. The air state is denoted by this little air symbol at the top. And a rune is basically just a colored square on the map, like that. The next spell I'm going to show you is Hurricane, which is a 2 AP spell. It puts an air rune, does air damage, and also steals a bit of HP. Obviously, it doesn't heal me because I'm already full HP. And it is a little weaker than Aether. Uh, so Aether 607 to 645, Hurricane a little weaker. And Hurricane can only be used once per target per turn as well. So usually it's used as a quick way of getting someone into air state or used as a ivory deactivator. I don't know, it depends. Okay, next spell is Astral Blade, which is 4 AP cost, has a lot of range. 
and it basically does uh, it does pretty decent damage uh, especially at range so astral blade basically minus is three range from the target as you can see here minus three range the description says that it's going to plus three range to you but that's actually false okay so the next spell we have is comet 4 ap cost it's a little weaker than astral blade but basically you hit the target and it flings you backwards it is possible to use comet twice a turn so you can use it here and then again usually if a hopper mage has 12 ap uh either from his stats or from getting ap buffed in a fight and you're at range it is possible to use astral blade and then comet twice like that okay so those are the agility spells we have another spell which is called transfixing gust and i will mention what that is uh when i get into a pvm fight and i'm gonna do that right now actually so let me just go there okay so now that we're in a pvm fight uh i want to mention transfixing gust which is the variant of hurricane so these two are the two interchangeable agility spells and the other agility spells are pretty much a no-brainer when it comes to playing agility hopper mage because you have to use them but okay let's focus on these spells transfixing gust is a free ap spell and does damage in an area of effect and as you can see by doing so you get multiple targets into the air state and place multiple runes as well so i'm just gonna place an air rune on this last one here as well and i'll explain why um once you have all of these targets in the air state uh, okay wait let me just pass my turn now obviously they're going to move off the air runes it's quite obvious they're not going to stay or except for gob shell because it has zero mp now one of the spells we have called imprint we use imprint and basically it'll place a rune below the target depending on their state so these guys are in air state so it places an air rune and then we have a lot of runes on the map it is possible to use a spell called runic overcharge which triggers all of those runes and deals damage depending on how many runes there are so right now i believe there's seven runes so it's going to deal damage seven times yep as you can see seven times dealing damage and it gets rid of the runes of course so yep okay the next thing we're going to do is talk about polarity it'll do things uh depending on their state so if the target is in water state it's going to attract them if the target is in earth state it will repel them if the target is in fire it'll swap positions with you if the target is in air state it will teleport you to the other side like that and you notice that the spell is only one ap so that's pretty nice uh, this is a good spell for positioning and moving and so on so you can use it to teleport to the other side since uh, these guys are in air state and it also gets rid of the air state that's an important thing that we need to keep in mind all right so let's transfix in gust again to heal up a bit you know it's a very nice uh spell for healing especially in pvm when you have multiple enemies that are grouped okay let's use uh runification and that will do damage to anyone that is standing on top of a rune so you might be thinking there are uh, some things that we can do with these spells uh combined and one thing that you might be thinking is to use imprint to put an air rune below them and then we use runification to activate the runes so this is a good way of uh, and each rune that you activate will actually give you 50 of the stat so those were air runes of 50 agility of each so that, that's actually a good way to gain more damage the next thing we have is contribution and what contribution does is it will 
gain a bonus for the target so you can use it on an ally if you wanted you know because it has a lot of range and using that will basically gain a, a bonus depending on how many targets are in the air uh, in this state so if the targets in air state we have three targets on the map that are in air state so if i use it on myself it is going to give me two ap because the spell stacks twice only so if i use it on myself it gets rid of the air state on the enemies and it actually says plus three ap but that is a glitch it is actually supposed to be only two ap as you can see i now have 13 ap which is expected because it's plus two ap so yeah that's contribution and obviously looking at uh if the enemies are in water state then you'd be getting 150 power if the enemy is in fire state you get 480 shield or if the enemy is in air uh, earth state you'd get one mp and it only stacks twice so the max that you can have is pretty much two of the buffs yeah so that's uh that's pretty much uh, those main spells and I'm not done yet. Let me just finish the fight and we'll get on to the next lot of spells. Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to change my spells up a bit and show you another PVM fight. Um, Alright, I need to get a fairly easy mob okay buzz the buzz the that'll do okay so basically i've switched uh runic overcharge to runic treatment and i'm gonna show you propagation and elemental shield as well as tribute okay starting off easy with elemental shield the spell will give you 25% resistance for two turns whenever you are hit with a certain element you will lose 5% resistance of that element and the person who hits you will also gain the elemental state corresponding to the spell that they use so let's see this buzzer here it uses an agility spell on me so he gained the air state and I also lost 5% air resistance and 5% air resistance because both bosses hit me. They're both in the air state now. And my resistance will go down, but it will not go below the resistance that I started with before using elemental shield. So, yeah, so once the person is in the air state, you can do certain things with them that you want. Okay, so the spell Tribute here, depending on, uh, so Tribute is different to Contribution because Contribution can be used on a, an ally and it consumes all the states of the enemies. But Tribute is used on the enemy as opposed to Contribution used on your ally or yourself and you will consume the state. So if I use it on that guy, then I'll gain 1 AP for two turns because that guy was in the air state so if he was in water state i'd gain 250 power if it was in fire state i gain 480 shield if it was in earth state i'll gain one mp so let me just use an earth spell here and you notice i use tribute here i will gain one mp as you can see there okay the next spell is propagation when you use that on a target it will transfer the state of the target to anyone uh, any enemies within three squares so it's quite useful using that there and it'll transfer him into air state uh, this is especially useful in pvm where you have one enemy that is in a, a certain elemental state and you use uh, propagation on him and he spreads the elemental state to all the other enemies within the same area and when it's when all the enemies in the area are in the elemental state you can use imprint that'll put an air rune 
underneath all the enemies that are in the elemental state and you can activate it with runification like that and yeah so that's uh, propagation you know it's pretty much just spreading the elemental state of a certain enemy to anyone that is next to them okay the next spell we have that i'm going to show you is runic treatment this spell is the variant of runic overcharge as you saw uh, runic overcharge is the one that did a lot of damage depending on how many runes are on the map runic treatment will be the one that heals depending on how many runes on the map there's three runes on the map so it'll heal me three times each time being five percent of my max so 215 215 215 and it gets rid of all the runes so that is actually a uh, pretty nice spell because uh you know it, it heals and it can be used twice per turn but only once per target so assume that i heal myself with the runes um on the map and then i use imprint again that imprint will put more runes down and then i'll use runic treatment on an ally and that'll heal them so that's a useful thing to notice about those two spells okay what did i Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Journey. Journey is a pretty much a jump or teleport spell which will deal damage to anyone between you and the caster depending on the elemental state. So this guy is in the air state, so it'll do air damage there. And you teleport to the other side, it's three turns cooldown. And I can hit it like this. So you might have remembered that at the start of the video, I mentioned that uh, Agility Hopper Mage is the most useful class and Journey is 4 AP cost and has a free turn cooldown and that's because Agility has another way of teleporting which I'll show you soon. Okay, so after I just showed you all of those Agility spells and all of those uh, yellow spells and explained you know how they work and so on uh, runic treatment as well you're probably thinking right now that this class is a very useful class uh, when it comes to uh, fighting but i need to tell you that these four yellow spells i actually use none of them for pvp and i've saved the pvp variants that i use until last so I'm going to make the adjustments now and tell you exactly what spells I use and why. Alright, so let's have a look here. I don't use runification, I use manifestation. And I'll tell you why later on. I do not use polarity, I use quadramental current. I do not use contribution, I use creation. I do not use propagation, I use elemental trap. And I don't use transfixing gust, I use hurricane. I don't use imprint, I use elemental cycle. So yeah, these are the PvP spell variants that I use and I'm going to explain how they work now. And I'll be doing it at the pouch ink ball because the spells before are more effective in demonstrating if there were multiple targets to hit. That's why I went and did a PVM fight. But now let's go to the pouch ingball and show you how these spells work. Okay. Now, the um, we're, we're gonna get a bit more advanced now uh, and I'm gonna start introducing the other elemental states and what they can do uh, in terms of rune combinations. So let's start off by putting a target in the air state. Okay, we have elemental cycle here, which basically changes the target's element depending on the element. And so far the thing is in air state. So it's going to go into earth, then water, then fire. You can only use it three times per target per turn and use four times uh, in total per turn. And you get one AP every time you use it. So you're basically changing the 
target's elemental state for free. So use it once, it will change into earth. Use it once more, it will change into water. Use it once more, it will change into fire. And you can't use it a fourth time because it's the restriction. But if I use it again, it will change it back to... Oh, uh, yeah, it will change it back to air. Okay. So that's basically changing the target's state. Uh, and now we have Quadramental Current, which is a very, very powerful spell, uh, especially the fact that it costs 1 AP to use. And it's 6 range and does not require a line of sight, so you can use it uh, uh, behind a wall or whatever. Now if the target is in water state, it will do 30% erosion. That is the most common thing that I do in PvP. Because it's the only mechanism for a Harper Mage to inflict erosion. If the target is in air state, it will do minus 5 range. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, if you, you know, add it on to Astral Blade, where you minus 3 range of the target. And you also use Quadramental Current, so let me show you. So, minus 3 range there, and use Quadramental Current. The animation is actually pretty nice as well. Um, you know, okay, so the thing has minus eight range now. The animation is actually pretty nice. Next, we have Manifestation. Uh, this spell is one to fourteen range, uh, modifiable. So in a standard set, it would be one to eight range, but I have plus six range, so it's fourteen. And okay, so uh, putting it simply. If there is a rune underneath the target, use manifestation on that rune, and it will it will activate the rune, and it will deal damage to the enemy standing on the rune, and it will put them in the elemental state depending on what the rune was underneath. Um, so, right, so now that the thing is in air state, let's use elemental cycle again. Uh, get him into water state and you know depending on whatever elemental state the person is in if you use quadramental current um different has a different animation so the water state put him in 30 percent erosion for one turn which is pretty nice um like i said before that is the most common thing that i use okay you would have remembered that the previous rune that was placed was an agility rune so the, ne the next spell, uh, Creation, will place a rune on the targeted cell depending on the last rune that you place. So the last rune that I placed was a Agility rune, Air rune. So if I put a Creation there, it will put an Air rune. And of course the rune will disappear in two turns, because uh, that's how it works. Alright, so now that uh, Creation, um, you know what Creation does. The spell manifestation is actually uh, goes hand in hand with creation because um, so manifestation before if the target was standing on top of a rune just does damage and you gain 50 agility because uh, it was an air rune now manifestation will if you use it on a rune that does not have anyone standing on it will have a special effect so in the air state, uh, air rune, it'll teleport anything within three squares vertically opposite. So that thing will go here. Or if I put a creation here, it'll teleport me to the other side. Like that. It's a very useful mechanic for cooping enemies. And it, it, it's quite useful uh, for a uh, harper mage because uh, journey is the only teleporting spell that they have. And apart from... You, you know, apart from uh, Journey, you know, the other teleport is Creation and the Manifestation. So, okay, well, let me just get rid of this thing here. And I'll put another air rune here, and I'll show you that uh, if we try and use Manifestation on that, it'll technically teleport the Perch Ingball into the wall. And technically, you can't do that. So it just stays where it is and it doesn't move, but you still get 50 agility. At the start of your next turn, the manifestation will die. 
and when it dies it applies the corresponding state so the air manifestation will make everyone in the area of effect into the air state and so another thing you um, might want to notice with the creation I've shown you what the what the air one does now if we have a fire creation let's put a fire creation over here notice that the creation is now fire because the last rune that I put over here was in fire so you might have noticed in uh, PvP that you've seen some hopper mages teleport to the other side of the map uh, with a fire rune and that's possible uh, it's not the other side of the map it's actually only 14 range or if they get range buff from a crowd then it has more range but it is quite a pretty nice mechanism so if I teleport here with manifestation I can do that and this fire manifestation will now be over here which obviously dies the following turn and it will make anyone within three squares of it into the fire state now so as the description says fire the caster switches places with the manifestation now water state the manifestation attracts all entities three cells away so let me show you what that means right, let me just put this here right, let me just tribute to get rid of that fire state and i put an air uh, an air state here oh sorry no i put a, a water state there now we put a creation uh, here the creation is now water so if we manifestation that it will attract anyone within three squares of it towards the manifestation like this all right let's get rid of this thing let's put an earth now that the thing is in earth state uh if we put a creation here manifestation uh, if it's an earth manifestation anything within three cells of the manifestation will be repelled two cells so if i go here i'm within three cells of the manifestation uh yeah of the rune so manifestation on there it'll push anything within three cells of the earth manifest uh, earth rune back three squares and obviously when the thing dies anything within three squares becomes earth state so that is um the main pvp variants uh oh sorry i forgot elemental trap okay elemental trap uh is the variant of propagation as i showed you at the start uh it's very very useful because uh okay let me just finish the fight and then i'll show you again what elemental trap does okay okay um all right so elemental trap will have a certain effect on an area of effect of two squares as you can see here uh depending on the target's elemental state so i have put him into the earth state so let's put an elemental trap here the enemies cannot see that elemental trap uh, hence why it's called a trap and now if another enemy walks into that trap it'll activate and have its effect on anything within two squares of it similarly if i walk into the square or if the target walks into the square it will activate so as the elemental trap says earth state reduces the duration of active effects by one turn is essentially minus one effect duration so i go there minus one effect duration on the pouch ink ball and it loses the earth state okay let's try water state now and we put a elemental trap there and as it says the water state will apply the gravity state like that and you know it's um it's, it's pretty nice because 
it's the only mechanism a hopper mage has of putting an enemy on gravity state and it has saved my life a few times in the past okay now we have air state the elemental trap will apply the unable to lock state so you know you put it within two squares unable to lock means the pouch ingball cannot lock any of my teammates this this is extremely useful versing a you know one of those high ap reduction and lock feckers where you know they jump in they uh, gravity glyph so you can't dodge and you can't move out you can't jump uh elemental trap put them in the air state activate the elemental trap and they can't lock you and that means your ally is free to run that has saved my time uh, my life a few times in the past as well lastly we have fire which uh, reduces the heals received by two I've actually never ever used this before because uh, okay firstly it doesn't even show the description but if you click him it'll say he was received 50% I suppose it's good against an inner rips or something but you know it's, it's it's not really useful and you know it's very rare that I can get a person uh, where, where I need to reduce their heals uh, by two because you know you might as well make them unhealable uh, which harper mages can't but there's no point in dividing their heals by two it's, it's, it's still a bit pointless for me. Okay, so that's that. And now we are moving on to the next part, which is very, uh, it can be a bit complex, but it's basically elemental combinations. And I'm going to list it out on the screen right here. Um, okay. Okay. So air state and water will reduce the target's damage by 25%. Air and fire, minus 3 AP, uh, which is dodgeable. Air and earth, steals 3 range. Fire and earth, 120% damage sustain. Fire and water, minus 50 dodge. Earth and water, minus 2 MP. So, let me show you what I mean by that. Uh... As you've noticed uh, so far in these uh, previous like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I've been trying to keep it as simple as possible by only putting the target into one state, as you can see above the head. Now, like I said, um, you can combine states, so a, a, an air, and if you put a water on them as well, elemental combination of Fire, uh, of water and air will reduce their final damage inflicted by 25%. So, one way that we can, uh, you know, do this is okay. So let, let's put let's put uh, them in the air state. We use elemental cycle. You can change them to, let's say, water, and then you notice the air rune underneath is still an air rune, so you use manifestation there, activates the air rune and puts them into the air state, which causes an elemental combination of 25% uh, damage reduction. Let me show you another example that is quite common, and that example is earth and fire or fire and earth it doesn't matter the order so that that one's in uh fire and now we do earth so now they are 120 percent damage sustained so they suffer more damage and every time you make an elemental combination you will gain 50 power for two turns so that's pretty nice now Okay, so let's put this guy into the air state and let's say I use an earth spell and the air and the earth will steal three range. Yep, so he loses three range, I gain three range. And, you know, you might be thinking it might be a bit difficult to remember this stuff, but it actually isn't because all of the spells have that effect and it tells you. So... See how it says the target's elemental state modifies the effects undergoes. Okay, so water minus 25% damage. That means if the target is currently in water state and you use hurricane on the target, that means it'll be a water and air combo, so minus 25% damage. If the target is currently in the fire state and you use hurricane on them, that'll be a fire and air combo, so minus 3 AP. 
So, okay, so let, let me just use Volcano there to put him in the fire state. And if you use this spell on him, it'll minus 3 AP. But it doesn't even have any AP because it's a pouch ink ball, so he's dodged a loss of 3 AP. Uh, as a Harper Mage myself, I don't have much AP uh, reduction, so... You know, the, the most common combination that I do is uh, air and water for the minus 25% damage. Yep. So, okay, so let's manifestation this thing to get him into the air state. Because there was an air rune underneath. And we can just hit him, I suppose. Um, what else did I forget to mention? Now, I'm pretty sure that's the main spells. Uh, oh, okay, we have D-Flag, uh, which basically minuses one effect duration of the target. It is also possible to do that on yourself, uh, in case you're wondering. Uh, you want to unbe uh, unbewitch like a poison or something on yourself. Minuses one effect duration of the target. It costs 4 AP. Uh, now that the person is in fire state, you know, you can either add an earth combination with the fire to get him into 120% sustain, or you can use tribute to get rid of the fire state and get you 480 shield. You know, there's many, many things you can do here. Uh, it's all situational. Uh, that's why Harper Mage is a very versatile class, you know, like it's, it's not an easy class to play. It's definitely harder than playing Osa. Uh, for sure, but I do like the class. Uh, so let's add a creation here, and then we jump back here. And then next turn, you can manifestation with the creation and teleport to the other side of the map, of course. Um, uh, so let's just uh, finish off this fight. You know, the possibilities with Harbor Mage are endless do many many things with them okay so now that we are towards the end of the video I want to show you um, you know some things that you can do with this class that will make your life uh, you know a little bit easier or could be a bit uh, a bit useful um, you know these are things that I've observed from other players uh, especially the Hopper Mages in Ilizaili, uh, because the Hopper Mages there are very, very smart. And, you know, I honestly thought that my Hopper class was a bit useless until I went to Ilizaili for two months and I got um, a bit of experience from them. Uh, okay, but let me. Alright, so one trick that you want to do is. Uh... Okay. So at the, start of the, at the start of the fight, usually you're on the other side of the map. And, you know, uh, one thing you want to do is put him in Earth State there and then use that Earth and Air combo to minus 3 range, uh, as well as the minus 3 range from the Astral Blade. So they're actually minus 6 range on the first turn, which is pretty nice. And then you might want to put them in uh, Earth State. Oh, sorry. Uh, put them in Earth State. And then put an elemental trap near them. So if they walk into the elemental trap, they get minus one effect duration. Uh, you know, it, it has come in handy before. Um, yeah. So that's uh, something that you can keep in mind. Uh, for like maybe turn one of the fight or something like that. Alright, the next thing is uh, a way to get minus 2 effect duration. So whenever a sacrifice happens, so somebody sacrifices their teammate and the teammate is low HP, it is possible for me to get rid of the sacrifice by doing minus 2 effect duration with, with only costing a 6 AP costage and I still have AP left to hit. What you're going to do is use the flag on the enemy to get the minus one effect duration and you're going to use elemental cycle to change them into the earth state and then you use elemental trap walk into the elemental trap and that's another minus one effect duration and there goes your sacrifice 
This is also useful for getting rid of uh, the majority of buffs in the game last for two turns, such as Rampart or Fekka Shield. Uh, you know, like random shit uh, lasting for two turns. So, you know, minus two effect duration per turn is actually quite nice. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you involves uh, air creation. So, you know, make sure you put an air rune so that the next uh, creation that you put is going to be an air creation. Put a creation there, put an elemental trap on the other side. Change the target into water state with elemental cycle. Use manifestation on there, that'll fling them to the other side into the elemental trap and put them into gravity state. An extremely useful technique because uh, it prevents Sakarias and Iopes from coming close, especially if they're in gravity. And the thing about it is they can be used every turn as well, so put a creation there. Elemental trap over here. Uh, obviously, the guy was um, he was already in the uh, air state because the air manifestation had had died, and it put anyone within three squares into the corresponding state. But if there's a cheap way you want to get him into water state and you know requires a, a little AP cost, use this Earth spell Tectonic Breach. Puts him into earth state, change him with elemental cycle into water state, and then use manifestation over. That'll get him into the elemental trap, and that's that. So yeah, those were just uh, you know a few tricks that you want to keep in mind um, uh, when, when you're doing PvP. Okay, so those were my tutorial on the Hopper Mage spells uh, and you know pretty much the basic mechanics of Hopper Mage. Uh, I hope you learned something about the class. Uh, you know I, I didn't feel very confident with explaining because there's just simply too much to explain and I, I didn't even cover half the spells and I'm pretty sure this video is already so long. Uh, but you know I'm not a noob at the class. I've been playing it for a while now. Um, I'm not as good as I was with Osa but you know, I have a decent understanding and I am quite su successful in PvP. Um, always a legend for both solo and group uh, this season. Uh, yeah, but if you have any questions about the class, please let me know below and I'll be sure to answer it uh, in you know, highly detailed answers as well, not just two word answers. Because uh, I want to help you guys, you know, uh, it's the whole purpose of my channel. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.